Well, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming and joining me for another wee Tai Chi session. Uh, we're going to look at some Chen style today. Um, but before we do, we're going to warm up. I can nearly dress myself. We're going to warm up with a little bit of lymph work. So this is your cleansing, detoxifying, and aiding your immune system work. If you're feeling congested, maybe you've got some boned sinuses, some hay fever, recovering from uh, a bug, or indeed having had an injury, all these things can benefit from lymph work. It just helps to shift the gunk, empty your bins, so to speak. So let's take right hand and fist, please, left hand straight and tuck back that thumb, bring the feet together, bring the hands together and we press forwards, lovely. So the first thing we're gonna do is rub our hands vigorously together. This in itself moves a little bit of lymph, but it energizes our hands, excellent. And we're going to go to the main drain. So we're going to go to the breastbone and we're going to do our little circles. And I encourage you, rather than moving your arms like this, move your center. So whenever you move your center, it becomes a lever and it helps to give power and strength to whatever else you're doing. So think of it using, like using the, um, screwdriver to take the lid off the paint tin rather than trying to use your fingertips. So by moving my center, I'm just turning from my center, I can get lots of power into gently mobilizing the flesh over my breastbone. Good, and I'm going to open my hand into the cupped position. Do you see that? They're cupped rather than flat. Cupped position, and then play the the drums. What would that be? A bongo move? Up and down the breastbone. Open one arm and come across the chest. Tarzan and Jane move. Good. And the same on the other side. So we're including that whole area. Good. And we rub again. So we're working on the main drain for our lymphatic system. We actually get rid of toxins in a number of ways. We sweat them out, we breathe them out, we pee them out, we poo them out. Uh, and actually the majority of it goes through the digestive system, but it all dumps down into this area. All the little lymph nodes drain uh, into the main drain and then it gets processed through. So the next position we're going to go to is your left collarbone. So I'm going to go to my left collarbone. Place your hand over the collarbone and you can take your other hand to support the elbow and again move from center. So we're wanting to shift, move the flesh over the bone. Now you may find as you do lymph work, you can feel very tired. You can feel like, uh, I don't know, someone has just pulled the plug from your energy. Good, and cup your hands and pat. And this is common, I feel it myself as I do this work, but don't despair. The reason we feel that tiredness is because we are shifting toxins out of the body. So as they are released to be drained away, you feel the effects of those toxins and it just feels like, oh, tired. But within a few seconds, especially if you have a drink handy, you take your drink and the toxins are flushed. The body very happily and quickly removes those toxins and you'll feel your energy return. If on the other hand, you have just had a major illness or you're shifting a lot of waste, a lot of um, gunk that has built up. You may feel fatigue for a little bit longer. Let's take the hand to the other collarbone, please. Support the elbow. And again, move from center, shift the flesh around the collarbone. You might want to give it a rub if you like, but actually I find this kind of gently moving the flesh over the bone rather than just rubbing the skin is more effective and less irritating to pressure points. Good, let's cup the hand and pat. 
So if you are working on war gunk, if you have a backup of uh, lots of toxins, for whatever reason, then yes, you may feel a bit tired for a bit longer. In fact, you may be wiped out for a day, but it's actually a good thing because it's your system clearing it. It's kind of like a format reinstall for your body. So it's going through all the nonsense, all the stuff that shouldn't actually be there and getting rid of it. So maybe that day, if you have it of exhaustion, you just keep your fluids up, you rest. It's giving your body a chance to actually process out the stuff that is otherwise just sitting and lurking in your system. So it's actually much better to flush it out. But if you feel, oh, I can't afford a day of, of rest and I've been through a lot recently, then that's OK. Maybe just do a very little bit of lymph work for a few days and process it out a little bit at a time. But for now, let's now work on our sinuses. So this is the lymphatic system of the head. Basically, we've lots of cavities in our skull which helps it not be too heavy for a start, but also it has lots of immune support stuff going on there. So lots of these little holes basically in our skull with lots of good stuff there designed to catch and trap and take away pathogens, things that might otherwise be causing us harm. But sometimes those holes get filled up with gunk. Basically, maybe the body has produced so much sebum, so much um, snot and uh, white blood cells to fight off the infection that we end up getting very gunky. So this work can really help with that. We've rubbed our hands and now we're going to go behind the ears and we're just very gently stroking down towards the main drain. You can think of it like clearing out the pipes. <laughs> Literally, the lymph system is a system of pipes. They do have valves, but they don't have a pump. So movement in itself will help to shift your lymph. You may notice that some days when you're very sort of clogged and snotty, that just by going out into the fresh air and moving a bit can help a great deal. Of course, if you're allergic to things that are outside, maybe hay fever, going outside can make it a lot worse. But if you go into a place in nature that doesn't have those irritants, you'll start to feel better. So often the beach is a good place to go because uh, the fresh sea air doesn't have pollen so much. Good. All right. So we've done our stroking. Now we're going to do our little wiggly finger dance. Can you do that? So we go to the neck between the ear and the collarbone. And we gently pitter pat up and down. I always think of this movement as like you're tapping the uh, the control units on a steam engine. You're just going, is that working? And you just give it a little tap and it gets rid of any little pockets and places where it's stuck. Good. And then we do the same little wiggle finger, pitter patter behind the ear and down to the neck. So no need to thump the neck. I have seen some practitioners doing more of this and it, it takes the light from my eyes because you, you know, there are delicate structures in there. Um, there are arteries quite close to the, to the outside world and I'm happier with this. I don't know about you, but I'm more content to give a pitter patter than a thump to my neck. All right, well done. Okay, next we're going to go to the face itself and we're going to go to the chin. In fact, I'm going to come close to you so that you can see what I'm doing. So we've rubbed vigorously. We go to the chin, we go up and round the face. So we want to make sure that our hands and our face are nice and clean before we do this work. Especially if you're out and about, at least sanitize, please, just in case there's still bugs out there that we want to avoid. Good. So you can do this six to nine times, three to nine times even. And then we go all the way over the scalp, behind the ears and down the neck. That's actually the, the course 
of the, the lymphatic drainage. Okay, we go again. There are actually several courses. But one time I used a little nose squirt thing um, to help my immune system when I had a cold. And it was quite sharp. And I remember getting a pain all the way around behind my ear and down my neck when I used it. It was just, it was like vinegar. And uh, I went, oh, that's interesting. That's the, that's the path of the lymph that I've just experienced. So when we do this motion, we're actually encouraging the energy to drain. So if there's stuff stuck up here and if it can't go that way, it can go over, round, behind and down. Good. And again, six to nine times. Let's rub our hands again. And now we're going to move the scalp. So there's different ways of doing this. You can fix your wig, take hold of your head and fix your wig. Even if you're not wearing a wig. <laughs> Very good. So you're just gently shifting the flesh over the bone. There's a wee bit of wiggle there. This can be very useful with tension headaches or what you thought was a tension headache may have actually been a sinus headache. So very gently shifting the wig, try and move it in all different positions. So you're not pushing hard, you're just contacting and gently moving things around. That can be enough to give you a good bit of relief. Very good. There's another way of doing it. We can rub and this is your dry shampoo. So we get the fingers in there and again, we're moving the scalp. So I'm not rubbing my head. I'm sticking to the flesh through my hair. <laughs> There's not much hair there, <laughs> but you just stick to the flesh and you gently move the scalp around. So it's the same principle but maybe using more like pressure points of connection. Good, so you just get in there and massa our dry shampoo, so to speak. Very good, all right. So now we rub again and we're going to give the ears a wee pinch. This isn't directly lymphatic work, but you have lots of pressure points in there and these connect with the whole body. So do you see the way I'm not giving my ears any respite at all? I'm just going into every little nook and cranny inside and out, even that little flap at the front, and I'm giving it all a good pinch. Now, this is aiding the circulation. So in a way, it is helping the lymph. I'm going to give everything a pull now. Remember, your lymph doesn't have its own pump for the most part. So actually by encouraging blood flow, you're also helping the lymph to flow. You can think of there's a blood vessel and there's a lymph vessel and they're next to each other. So when the arteries are pumping, that gives a bit of movement and actually aids the lymphatic system to get a bit of movement as well. Physical movement is really the main thing that is going to pump the lymph. So it's not doing it itself, we need to move. So let's rub again. And we're going to release the fascia at the back of the neck uh, by working on the ligament new shine. So we take hold of the back of the neck and just gently drop your elbow, which is drawing the hands across. It's just releasing. Take hold. You can do this even if you have bone wasting issues, but you just have to be very gentle. So say if I had osteoarthritis, I would be just taking hold of the back of the neck and just dropping my elbow a little bit. So there was just a feeling of hugging the neck and release. Do you see how gentle? So you can do it. You just have to do it with sensitivity. If you don't have bone wasting issues, you can be a little bit more intense with just drawing the structures from the back of the neck towards the spine. You 
Good. Now, again, that's not working directly on the lymphatic system, but it is releasing everything. Eyes, ears, nose, mouth, jaw, neck, shoulders. And if structures release, that helps the lymph to flow. So anything that is knotted up and tight, all the toxins just build and build and build in that area. So relaxation is another aspect that we want to harness in our lymphatic work. Let's rub again. Now we look at the underarms. So there's the main drain. There's all the stuff going on in the head. There's the underarms and the tops of the legs. And these are the main areas we want to keep clear so that our entire system can drain. They're like sentinels. The tops of the arms look after each arm. The tops of the legs look after each leg. And then there's the main business down the center. We want to keep them all happy. So let's lift one arm, please. Drape it over and go into the crease of the arm with a hollow fist like that. And we're just gently mobilizing, pull the flesh over the structures. See what I'm doing? I'm gently stretching the flesh. Actually, you can go even into the arm itself, just stretch the flesh so that nothing is stuck. Good. And then with a cupped hand, not a flat hand, but a cupped hand, we're using the hollow to create like a clip clop noise, like a horse with a, you know, the, what are they called? Coconut shells. So we're making the clip clop noise, which sends a vibration through and helps to break any little adhesions, any little blockages in that area. Good, and change. Now, if you've had lymph, nodes removed, say you've had breast cancer or something like that. Yeah, there's not much point in working away at the area, but you can gently stretch the flesh. That's no problem at all. And you can gently clip top, but you want to direct everything towards nodes that actually exist. So if you had one set untouched on one side, nothing on the other, then you'd be gently stretching and moving things towards the center rather than the crease. So let's try on the other side, gently stretch, or you could direct the, the flesh down the back. Yeah, so. Otherwise, we're just sort of opening up and stretching, mobilizing. If you can get right in there around the back, that's where I get congested. And ladies, when we're wearing supportive underwear, it's great to get the support but actually it can impede the lymph, it can get stuck. So cup your hand, please. Everything a good thumping, gentle, doesn't have to be harsh, but just get everything moving. So what I would recommend personally uh, is if you're feeling congested, go for loose, comfortable clothing pajamas basically uh, and any undergarments should be the loosest lightest things possible you don't want anything tight if you take your clothes off and it leaves a line that suggests it's impeding the lymph so take all that stuff off you can find undergarments that are actually loose and comfortable uh, and those are particularly useful when you're feeling congested so let's now go to the abdomen, please. Rub, stick to the abdomen and turn your center. And I just want you to get in there to all the nooks and crannies, to every part, work your way around. Traditionally in Qigong, we would do it in circles and we would go in line with the large intestines. So that's starting at your right side. This is my right side. The large intestines go up, ascending colon, they go across, transverse colon, and they go down, descending colon, before finally the exit in the middle. Uh, so actually you can go in line with that, you can go round in the circle, you can get in there and just move things around, and that will help digestive transit, it will help you poo. 
Uh, so that's very useful. But what I've noticed is actually you don't need to worry about going around in the circle. You can just get in there in any little bit of the abdomen and move things around and it still works. <laughs> it still works. So you can just go down the center if you want, but be thorough. The more thorough you are, the more you are releasing and getting rid of pockets of toxins. They are getting flushed out. And that's what we want. So let's now use our cupped hands. Give your belly a good drum, drum session. Now, over 70% of your lymphatic system is in your digestive tract. It's in your digestive system. So if you remember nothing else from this work, do your body drums, do your chest and your abdomen, your belly. And that will help your sinuses. And if you have heavy legs, it'll help your legs because everything is coming into this. So it's shifting things along. So we're nearly finished. We're going now to the crease of the legs. So if you have sore knees, sore ankles, swollen legs, swollen feet, this is getting the gunk out of the drain. This is your drain for your leg. So we go into the crease and the best way to do it is to sit down a little bit so you can actually feel where the line is between your body and your leg. And you get into that crease and you give it a little mobilizing. Again, you're stretching the flesh. Good. I know it looks a bit odd. Sorry about that. But this is the really important. This is the, uh, it's not auxiliary, what's it called? inguinal nodes. The ones at the armpits we've just done are the auxiliary nodes. So let's go into the other side and again stretch the flesh. Now sometimes I actually feel like my skin is tearing when I do this. It's not. <laughs> the thing that is feels like it's tearing is the fascia. The fascia. So that's like cobweb type structure. And just like cobwebs, the fascia sticks to itself and it becomes like Velcro. So that tearing sensation that I feel is the Velcro type stuff ripping apart. It's releasing the adhesions. So don't panic if you feel like something's tearing. It's not your skin. Go gently. You don't need to be harsh. But actually that release will allow energy to flow and allow your lymphatic system to function better. So we're going to bend the knees a little bit, make that crease and use the blades of your hands, rub, and we chop. Now, gentlemen, please be particularly careful. You don't want to hit anything um, vulnerable, but we just give a good thump to the crease. Good. And even three strikes is enough. And when you finish there, you'll feel a kind of tingling. You'll feel that the energy has been stimulated to that area. So this is a nice way to look after your knee if your knee is too sore to touch. You can actually help it by draining the lymph. We're going to rub the hands again now and we're going to go behind the knees, the popliteals. So the knees themselves have their own lymph nodes. So we bend the knees a little bit and bring the hands behind the knees and just give them a jolly good rub. And then again with cupped hands. And give them a little thump. Very good. Now, finally, we're going to go to the inner elbows. And there are minor uh, lymph nodes there as well. Not as big as the knees because your legs are bigger than your arms, but still it's useful. So we rub again. And we can just give a little massage to the crook of the elbow, keep the elbow a little bit bent and give it a wee thump. And to the other side, a little massage. A little thump. Good, and now we're just going to give everything a thump. So rub again, up to the top. Good. 
Don the arm, come up the arm. Don the arm, come up the arm. Don the arm, come up the arm. We're looking to stimulate flow. Up, down, up, down, up, down the chest. In towards the belly, on the back, on and up, on and up, down the outside, and up, now down the back, up the front, down the back, up the front. You get where we're going, down the back. Up the front and rest. Good. Now just take a moment and listen to your body. You can stand if you need to. You can sit and just feel into any sensation. Probably getting a lot of tingling going on. And tingling is your life force, your vitality that has been stimulated into action and that's what we want we want the energy to flow and that will help to flush toxins so one more little thing and then we're into our chan style and that is our heel taps so i mentioned that lymph doesn't have its own pump i kind of lied it kind of does but it's your calf muscles so your calf muscles the muscles at the back of your lower legs Every time they're used, they act as a massive pumping drive to get the fluids back up the legs and into the main drain. So every time we use our calf muscles by lifting and lowering, even pushing off a foot as we walk, your lymphatic system is getting a bit of a pump. But it is a mechanical pump from muscles as opposed to the lymph vessels themselves doing the pumping. So we're going to do our 100 ailments go away by Bing Xiao. And as the name suggests, it's not just one issue, it's your lymphatic system. So it's your whole immune system is boosted to fight off hundreds of different bugs. So it's very well named. It's not an exaggeration. We're going to lift up the arms and let the wrists be floppy. And we lift and drop the heels. And let your whole body relax like a rag doll and let the wrists bounce. We say a hundred ailments go away, but seven heel taps every day, a hundred ailments go away. So you don't have to wait until you're exhausted. You can just do a few. We did a few more than seven. So if several hundred ailments have gone away and we let our arms just fall and run out of steam. And there we have done a relatively thorough lymphatic sequence. So right now, ask yourself, are you thirsty? The likelihood is yes, you are, because we've just shifted a lot of fluid. So I invite you now to join me and take a drink. <laughs> Cheers. Now, I am drinking warm water, that is boiled water with a bit of cold, and lemon juice squeezed straight from a lemon. And this is also very useful for your lymphatic system. Lemon is a natural cleanser. So cheers. Lemon actually helps to fight infection. And I didn't put boiled water on it because it's full of vitamin C, but boiled water would actually kill the vitamin C. So I put warm water, not warm water from a tap, but boiled water with a bit of cold. And then the lemon has a cleansing agent. It's refreshing in itself. It's a liver tonic. So it's actually helping my digestion uh, for when I'm ready to eat. So lemon is a very potent, powerful little uh, addition to your water. 
It's a bit tough on the tooth enamel though, so I would suggest that you have some xylitol handy uh, for afterwards. That's birch sugar uh, and that re-strengthens your enamel. Good, so have a nice wee drink. I'm not really into product, product placement, but this is, um, oh gosh, I'm not sure if you can see that with the contrast, but probably not. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so this is xylitol sweeties, but it's literally just um, xylitol um, with a firming agent and natural flavoring. This is uh, grapefruit flavored. Actually, I make my own xylitol sweeties so that I can strengthen my tooth enamel. And this is literally, I just get xylitol, which is a sweetener, they call it, but it is a natural sugar from the birch tree. And I just melt it. Um, it melts at a very low temperature. So I just melt it in a pan and, um, and then pour it onto a baking tray um, with some grease, grease proof paper. And, um, and I can add peppermint oil if I want, edible peppermint oil, and then just put it in the oven just to keep it safe away from my pets. So I don't turn the oven on, but I just put it in there to set. And then the next day I have lovely, like a peppermint, what would you call it? Like, um, like candle mint cake. Yeah, depending on how much peppermint I put in and it's perfect. So it's two ingredients and you don't need the mint flavoring. So it's very, very useful for an after dinner mint or after um, lemon, just to strengthen the enamel again. They put it in toothpaste. So it really is, um, it's a great tooth protector in itself. So isn't that funny? You don't think of sugar as, as uh, good for your teeth but xylitol really is, but it's dangerous for pets. So that's my little regime. If I'm doing lymph work, I have my lemon water and then I have a xylitol sweetie just to protect my teeth. Good, so let's now do some chan style <laughs> after all that. I hope you feel refreshed after your drink and maybe you'll notice that your strength is coming back to you. But if you did feel tired, it's gone away now because you have done a bit of flushing. So we had talked about doing the whole way through the form. Yeah, we could do at a trot, um, but I, actually I would like to focus on the second half of the form today. So maybe let's just do that. We'll do parts three and four, and I would like to finish looking at just that end section. So what I call the end game from the rotation. It can be quite difficult to just isolate one section of the form to jump straight into it. But let's do the second half. So parts two, uh, uh, sorry, parts three and four. So let's come together now uh, for part three is from your punch. So first of all, we do a second of Wuji. Feet together and we lengthen up through the top of the head, chin slightly down and back. And give yourselves a moment to calm. Good. Now let's prepare for our punch. Punch. Part three. Feel into center, around center, send it out.
forwards and backwards tricks. Now, if you need more space, take it. And End of part three, beginning of part four. You need one more step back. And another step back. A break step. Normal punch to the back corner, check posture, relax to center, punch, four corners. And this is your last set of clawed hands.
Notice I'm moving back a little bit. That's always an option. It's a repositioning technique, but it's not necessary if you have space. So this now is your end game from second high pat on horse. We relax to center. We do our circle roll and we turn a little to the left together to turn to the right. Right shoulder comes back, hands rotate as you turn and step. Turning body turns arms, hand under elbow. Pat. Three-way punch and prepare. And now this next punch is your diagonal down punch. So our special punch, we prepare, we relax to center and punch. And gather, uppercut, step. Single leg. Wrap in fists. Right hand comes inside, over the top, outside, expand, and open chest. Release, right hand up, left hand down, turn, kick, step down. Keep your structure, remember online we're going to do our half turn, so we keep the position, and rotate right shoulder back. Boom. Now we come up and over into the left and kick. Step back. Roll back, gather in fists, throw it out. Back and down. Jing Gong exits the temple. Hammer punch. Release. Fill right. Goes left. Good. Very, very nice. Gosh, we did that quick. <laughs> very nice. Okay, um, yes, I'd like to look at the end of the form. We'll do it a couple of times through. Uh, but I would also like to go over a correction that I have been given. Um, and it's so funny. We never deliberately do anything wrong, do we? We always think, oh, I've got that, I've got that. <laughs> and that never ends. <laughs> no matter how long you've been doing Tai Chi, um, you, you, you're sort of polishing and you think you've got it. And, and then, you know, you get a correction and you're like, oh, yeah, I didn't have that at all. <laughs> well, there's, there's degrees of getting it. So what we call it is degrees of deviation. So I'd like just to look a little bit at oblique step. So um, I'm going to show you it front wise on, normally in form. We're doing it facing our left. Um, but there were a few things that uh, I looked back at my students a couple of days ago doing this form and yes of course they were doing what I was doing and so they had picked up my little deviation so not quite doing it as perfectly as it should have been so if you watch please you're you're doing your you've done your three steps forwards so it's important that if you're turning center your arms turn so it's not just one arm and the other arm coming across. Do you see that? That arm's kind of just doing nothing. It has to also rotate. 
it has to rotate. Now I've been given the instruction that has to rotate. I'm now going, when I get the chance, I'm going to do a bit of homework and look back at the Grand Master doing it and just check which direction he is rotating his front arm as he does this, because my correction was this way, as I understand it, but it may well be this way. So I need to check, but it needs to rotate. So I want please to uh, make sure that you have some movement, even just getting that idea that there is a rotation. If the center rotates, both arms rotate. It's not just one arm doing the work and the other arm just kind of hanging around waiting for it. So that's, that's the correction I want you to take on board, but something must happen. If there's rotation in center, there must be rotation in both arms. So from here, for now, I'm turning both palms to face up. So from here, both palms face up and then release and then facing down. And the next little moment here is we make a hook if we can before the knee, but it's as you rise, the hand must be hooked and there's a rotation there. Again, the body's rotating, so the hand has to rotate. And now think of fueling again, this is your pivot point, your center hinges, and we want to feel the connect. So the center drives the hand up. It's not just lift the hand, <laughs> we drive the hand up. So we feel the connection. And then as we open one hand, the other hand must also open. So it is a, an expansion and relax rather than just go to the side and move the other arm. No, apparently we need to drive the hook up and then both sides open, a feeling of opening together and relaxing down. See what I'm doing? So the hook side won't open as much as the obvious movement, your right side, but it still has to move. Again, if one thing is moving, everything must move. This is a core principle of Tai Chi. If one thing moves, everything moves. Uh, our visiting lecturer for our Duan grading, Master Kango Wu, or Grant Master Kango Wu, made this very clear. So we have to keep returning to core principles. If one thing moves, everything must move. So we should never be just leaving something <laughs> completely inactive. It has to do something, even if it's just a feeling of something, it, it can't just sit there. So shall we try that together? We will do our uh, single, uh, sorry, our Shishin uh, Abu, our oblique step together. So can we all take our left foot forwards and then we'll maybe have time to go once through the end of the form, but this is good too. Okay, so we're here. Left hand and foot are forwards. We turn to the right and both arms rotate. We release a little, ah, I've gone a little too far. Let's do it again. Don't turn too much. Yeah, see, lots to work on. So not turn too much. So we turn, both arms turn. Turn a little bit further to release. And now we can bend the front leg. Turn, pinch and center drives the arm up and let's expand both sides together and relax to center good let's do it again yeah so you can give your legs a wee bit of a break and don't turn too much but turn both arms a little bit more of a turn to release the arms and now we bend the front leg turn center there's your hook. Center drives the arm to lift and then both arms open together and relax to center. Good. Okay, and relax. I think I'll 
make a judgment call, we're not going to get the end of the form done. But I'd really like you to get this move in more detail. What I'd like to do is show you it facing the other direction, because I realize an awful lot of what was going on there, you maybe couldn't see. So I'll show you it from the other direction. I've shown you it from the front. So I'm still standing on my right with my left leg extended forward. You can just watch if you like. So I'm trying not to turn too much in my center, but I'm turning my arms. Now I'm turning a little bit further to release. Do you see that little transition there? Release. And now both hands move. I'm turning center, rotating into hook. I'm driving the arm up. And now both hands open and relax to center. That's what I'm working on at the moment. Because <laughs> I thought I had it. I thought I was good at that. <laughs> and then, you know, my teacher's going, yeah, it's not quite right. <laughs> let's, let's sort it. Now, it looked, a blind man on a galloping horse would have gone, yeah. Um, and even, you know, a few years ago, I got, you know, the master said, yeah, that's good. Um, but it's maybe... You know, it's maybe kind of slid back a little bit since then. There's always something that we can do to improve. Let's do it once more together, please. Yeah. Um, we'll do it the way we normally do. So it's familiar, comfortable, left side forwards ready. Don't turn too much, but turn to the right. Both arms turn. A little bit further, turn and bend the front leg. Hands sink down, turn, both are doing something, pinch, now, center drives the arm up, remember to keep the back full, and now we open both sides, and relax to center, good, I hope you got something out of that, I got a lot out of, out of that, even, you know, in training, if you get one little <laughs> nugget to go away with and work on that can be golden that can be very very helpful um remember tai chi it's every step is like a little drop of the ocean it contains the whole ocean so getting one move done really well is better than doing the whole form pretty good <laughs> we want to really polish good okay folks so we'd better stop for today as I say, we didn't quite get to do the end game that I was hoping to, but next week we will do a wee bit more on that. So I'd like next week, remind me please, we're going to do the whole form, <laughs> that's one, and then that little last section from here, just to focus on it a little bit more. I think we can spend more time on, on that. So, uh, But today, hopefully you got some good benefit from doing the lymph work, and then the Tai Chi will have actually aided the lymph to further drain and flow. So um, notice how your sinuses are. We didn't actually do the specific sinus things. So let's finish with that as warm down. We're going to do a little bit of face work. And uh, one, of, one of my, I shouldn't have favorites, but I do really like Feili Yip. Um, she's based in England. Uh, and she often will finish a class with face massage as well. So let's remind ourselves of this part where we're massaging the face and then up and over the hair, round behind the ears and down the throat. Good, and then let's just do a few little pressure points to finish, so we rub again. And we go two fingers either side of the widest point of the nose. Take the middle fingers away. So you're underneath your eyeballs onto the junction between your cheekbones and your, how'd you say, gum line. And just drill into that point. That's called welcome smell, yin xiang. Good, so we can go one way, then the other. But I find actually the down and out version has a more draining effect for the lymph. Good, we rub again. Now we go to bright eyes, Jingming. So just between the eyes, 
just above the bridge of the nose. We rub in little circles one way and then the other. And actually, again, I find the pressing down and out is going to help to drain your sinuses. It's going to help uh, more. Good. We rub again and we go to the inner corner of your eyebrows and circle one way and the other. And again, in and down, I think is a little bit better. And we're gonna grip the eyebrow ridge, squeeze it and press it in and release. Squeeze and in. So you're actually gripping the bone of the eyebrow ridge, good. And then we go halfway on the eyebrows and do the same thing. Grip and squeeze in. Good, release, rub again onto the temples. Again, we want to stick to the temples and then move the flesh around one way and then the other. See which way feels best for you. I was always taught go in both directions, but do you know what? I'm getting to the point, whichever feels more soothing. Yeah, go with that <laughs> up again. Very good. So we did the ears, we did behind the ears. You can give them another little cursory pinch and a pull. And finally take hold of the back of the neck and drop your elbow. Good. Very good. So lymph work on the sinuses actually helps to refresh and wake you up. So it's very useful to do this stuff first thing in the morning, especially on the head. It's called washing without water and it actually resets your body clock. So it helps you to wake up when you want to wake up. So please do not do this stuff before you go to sleep because it'll wake you up and it'll set your body clock to wake up at that time. So this is your early morning or rising practice. It tells your body now is the time to rise and shine and it will really help you. Please remember to combine it with plenty of fluids. So folks, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed a little different <laughs> bit of lymph work and Chen style together. Um, and I hope you have a lovely rest of week. Let's take right hand in fist, left hand straight. And we salute. Thank you very much. Well done.